Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now we will uh, start with the third technical session on levy and scope of tax. To handle this, we have eminent speaker, none other than C.A. Deepak P. May request our secretary, Ravinder Kore, to escort the speaker onto the desk. Welcome Mr. Very glad that Thank you. Now I take this up to give a brief introduction of uh, Mr. Deepak P. Jai, fellow chartered accountant and company secretary. He has supported clients in business setup, audit assistance, indirect tax advisory, due diligence, and secretarial compliance. Deepak has also appeared before the NCLT for various litigation matters. For the past nine years, Deepak's experience encompasses regulatory, regulatory advisory, assistance, and compliance across multiple industries, including startups, education, retail, multinational, and software. Has presented papers at various forums like uh, Willinger Institute of Management, NASCO, ICSI, ACI, and, and other forums. He is also a faculty member for the GST and UAVAC under the Indirect Cap Tax Committee of the ICI and Certificate Course on GST. His recent GST initiative has been uh, spreading GST awareness to trade and industrialists through seminars at various cities. Presently, his interest lies in deliberation and training in PAVA. With this brief introduction, I welcome you on the for you. Dubai is a main region where even though capital is Abu Dhabi, the main 
business happens in Dubai, then Abu Dhabi and then Sharjah. So when I say Dubai, just uh, refer it to uh, you, you, the complete UAE region. Uh, and I've traveled to Dubai where I see there is, it is really open economy in terms of the number of nationals who are residing there. There are close to 160 uh, countries, residents who are residing there, who just come there and have a life. Most of our friends we would have seen that they would have gone for employment there for a few years, but we don't find them returning back. They will tell me go for two years, earn, get the experience and come back, but the two years becomes four years very easily. The economy is so very open, you can, uh, even though we, it is a restricted Sharia law is getting followed there, but it's not that in the main Dubai it is very much restricted. Unlike Saudi Arabia where women have to dress completely and things like that, but Dubai is completely uh, open in terms of your business, in terms of your livelihood. So that's the reason it is uh, much popular. And with the VAT coming in, it becomes popular for chartered accountants also. So, when we talk to few chartered accountants there, they say we have been staying here for close to 7 to 8 years. When we came, we knew about taxation. But after coming here, there was no need of taxation, so we have forgotten about taxation. So, it's really, uh, you know, surprising to hear that, but still they are admitting that yes, they need some support. So, our institute being setting up, uh, doing a lot of seminars there, they have been able to recoup it again. But of course, once we go with our GST knowledge and support them, they feel that yes, they are getting a separate, a, a different approach. So this will be really helpful for us. So uh, the UAE is one of the countries amongst the GCC countries. GCC consists of six countries, which has Saudi Arabia, uh, Dubai, uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Oman, and other countries. So what uh, what was decided in 2015 is they wanted alternative revenues because they had a lot of spending for the welfare of the public. So they said, okay, we will uh, start off with having an alternative. The oil prices was uh, assumed then itself that it will going to get reduced. So they said we will have to have alternative revenues flowing in. So in 2015 itself, they fought, the GCC was formed and GCC decided, all the countries together decided that we levy something called as a VAT. And the percentage was decided in 2015 itself. Then itself they said, okay, we will levy VAT to as low as 5%. And there was no distinction between different categories of goods, difference between VAT, goods and services. Everything will be taxable at 5%. So they kept the VAT at 5%. So they started with the GCC VAT agreement, wherein they said, we will give the framework of the law, how the law has to be there for each of the countries. And this will give a broad framework. Uh, it will, uh, tell all the provisions, but will not detail give the specifics in detail. It will just give a broad framework of what is the law, how should each provision be applied for. So it was detailed VAT framework and each country could adopt those framework and make changes according to it. So once uh, GCC framework was there, then came the fed uh, federal law. First they started with the tax procedure, wherein the tax procedure was also not complete law. It did, it did not give the scope, levy, place of supply, time of supply, all those provisions was not there in the tax procedure. It just gave a broad procedure saying that who should raise the invoice, what should be the threshold, what should the government do, what should the resident, what should the taxable person do, what should be a categorization for zero rated supply, non-zero rated supply, those are the broad framework mentioned in tax procedures. Then came the tax law, which is the uh, federal decree law number 8. This gives the complete law. So this is the law which we'll, we will refer now. Uh, this law gives the scope the application, the levy, and the complete procedures. So uh, at the broader level, you have GCC VAT framework, which is agreement which, and is applicable for all the GCC countries. And the UAE adopted it is uh, its own VAT agreement, and it called it as uh, Decree Law Number 8 of 2017. And then it came up with executive regulation because a lot of clarity was needed after the Decree Law. And Decree Law referred saying that other provisions will be referred into the executive regulations. So that's how the flow is. You have the decree law and some procedural matters are mentioned in the executive regulations. <coughs> Apart from executive regulations, there, there is also something called as cabinet decisions. So issues like they have exempted healthcare, they have exempted all this medicals and medical equipments. But what are medicines and what are medical equipments came in through a cabinet decision later on. So we will find that Cabinet decisions will not be like notifications what we see here as and when it is issued. Cabinet decisions will be issued only to those matters which is referred in the executive regulations or the decree law. So 
So the decree law says that this matter will be dealt with in a cabinet decision. Only then a cabinet decision will come. And the law is also uh, mentioning that the VAT rate will be 5%. And there is no other mention saying that for other goods we will change the rate or going forward on a subsequent date the VAT can be increased. Nothing of that sort. So if any rate has to get changed, it will not be through any notification. The law itself has to get changed. So they, don't, they do not give an empowering power to the uh, authority saying that they can change the rate under subsequent point of time. And since this is a, not a democratic uh, country, it is all driven by decree laws. So the king itself or the ruling authority, the ruling sheikh, he will have to change the law and he will have to pass it. So there is no uh, question of two parties objecting to it and things like that. Whatever the law is stated, it has to be followed. Okay. But uh, for a country like UAE or the uh, whole country of GCC, making them understand that something like taxation is coming is very difficult because they can't believe that taxation has come to that. Up till uh, <coughs> 31st December, they were expecting that the implementation will get delayed. They were all expecting that there will be a delay by at least a month. But nothing like that. The law and the ruling power is very clear there. If they have said one day, it will come. So 1st January it has come. And now for them to understand taxation, they are still saying why should we pay taxes? But then when we try to make them understand that it is for your benefit, they are like even we used to get a benefit even before and we used to pay, instead of taxes, we used to pay a lot of penalties. The government is very strict there in terms of your traffic rules and your business pro procedures. So if you break your traffic signal, not as a car driver, but as a passenger or a, or a person who is walking on the footpath, you can't cross the street without there is a light on the footpath also. So you have to have a green light over there, only then you can cross. If you break that, you have to pay penalty of 200 dirhams. So they said all these penalties were there, then why this? Then we have to explain them saying that whatever you are paying is part of it, but uh, your country is also famous for a lot of tourists and travellers coming in. So if we come there and we spend something on the travel, we are also paying taxes. So this is an additional revenue to the government, so why don't you take it? Then they realize, okay, you know, taxation is good for us. At least they would always say that, why should we pay additional taxation? Now we will get into the levy and scope of tax. Uh, article 1 here is a definition article and article 2 is the scope. Levy. It says the tax shall be imposed on all taxable supply and deemed supply. So it doesn't say there shall be levied a tax or so and so. It just simply says tax shall be imposed on taxable supply and deemed supply. So what is taxable supply? And it should be made by a taxable person. Any supply made in a process wherein goods are getting transferred from one person to another person will not make it a taxable supply unless it is by a taxable person. So it is very important that any occasional transactions happening will not be liable to tax. Only taxation which is uh, made by a taxable person and should be an intentional business. Only then it is a taxable. So we will see the ingredients of taxable supply to understand in detail. They have defined also what is a taxable supply. So all these definitions are there in article 1 and there is no sub-article unless India when you have section 2, subsection 20, 21. So it becomes easy for anybody to refer any article of the definition saying all definitions are there in article 1. So article 1 defines what is taxable supply as it is a supply of goods or services for a consideration by a person in the course of business in the state of UAE and it excludes exempt supply. So that specifically defined exempt supply and it is kept out of the uh, taxable supply contingent uh, taxable supply provision itself. And what is deemed supply? If any supply transaction which do not fall in any of these criteria, of these six criteria does not fulfill, then they have brought in an artificial uh, levy provision where deemed supply is mentioned. And deemed supply is mentioned through three provisions. One is Article 7, Article 11 and Article 12. So we will look into each of these provisions in detail. When we say taxable supply means supply of goods or services. Now what is goods and what is services is defined. Goods means any property. Okay, so they have not said uh, mobile property, property. they have just said goods means any property and it includes 
immobile property also but you have a definition of services also so when they uh, refer goods then we have to refer to goods in respect of immobile property only to the extent of real estate so all those real estate contracts and things like that that will get covered under goods and other things any other services in related to real estate leasing transactions would get covered under services what is supply of goods supply of goods means the passing of ownership of the goods of the physical property or the right to use that property by an owner so if i have any physical property and i'm transferring the ownership that is supply of goods or i'm giving the right to use that is also supply of goods itself when uh, a distinction could be made when i supply something and i do not pass the ownership it is for a temporary transfer that will be considered as supply of service and transfer of ownership in a compulsory manner so when i am referring to these provisions i am making a reference to the decree law as well as the executive regulations because they have said in decree law what is supply of goods and executive regulations gives the complete example the complete detailing of it so i have taken provisions from both executive regulations and decree law and stated here so it says transfer of ownership in a compulsory manner if there is any compulsory acquisition made by the government that will also be treated as a taxable supply it will be treated as supply of goods whether taxable or no that uh, separate provisions are there but it on the prime of ace it is a supply of goods and entering into contracts for future transfer today i enter into any contract for future transfer that is also considered as supply of goods does that mean that tax is applicable as of the date of contract might not be the case because when to pay the tax is decided by the date of supply that is the point of taxation so it's only says that once i enter into a contract that is also liable to tax when the taxation has to be decided based, uh, based on place of supply and supply of services services are defined to mean anything other than goods and supply of services also is defined as anything any supply which is not supply of goods is supply of services so uh, the definition of services like in india we have to refer it to uh services not as a verb but we have to use it as a noun it's just a terminology services but there might not be actual services involved so the broad picture is you do any transaction you have to see whether it is falling under goods if it is not falling under goods if there is a supply element there then it becomes a supply of services because it's in terms of an exclusion where it says anything other than supply of goods is supply of services okay and the executive regulations further clarifies that apart from whatever is stated in the decree law these are the specific instances which will be de- uh, which will be detailed as supply of services this first one is granting of right so the granting assigning or transferring any right to use any goods will be a supply of service making available a facility or advantage so if you provide any facility or any services in terms of provision of rental services making available some product displaying some product all of those will be supply of services act of abstinence that is the negative of act uh, i am agreeing to doing uh, agreeing to do something which i i shouldn't do so uh, if i am supplying something the other person is saying you don't do it so act of not supply is also a service so you are getting a better edge by telling the other person don't do it so negative act is also a service like how we have in india as well transfer of an indivisible share in a good so if you have any goods which is jointly held by two people and the it cannot be divisible you cannot bifurcate which part of the goods belongs to you which part of the uh, goods belongs to other person it is called as indivisible tra- right in a good so uh, why is this here specifically is how it works in uae is you have all these shakes they have this uh, like likeliness for uh, holding gold and other precious metals or other precious uh, gems as well so if they have to hold any goods they can they have the authority to hold it by themselves but they generally what they do is they hold it with another sheik who is of the equal importance so it becomes a matter of uh, pride for them to share the jewelry or something with another sheik so when i hold it and one sheik holds it and other sheik holds it they have a indivisible right in it because even if they try to divide it it's not possible the value goes down suppose the emerald is held by one sheik and another sheik holds it 
it becomes a pride for him that the other sheikh is a joint holder in it. So if one person, two to three persons are holding it, and one one of the sheikh transfers to another third third sheikh, then it becomes a transfer of right in an immobile property in terms of an indivisible share that will be treated as service. So the extent of his share is transferring that will become a service element. And the transferring of licensing of an intangible right. So these are all the rights held by authors. You have any uh, artistic value, wherein you have an intangible right. That is a supply of service. Okay. Now we have understood goods and services. Then essential element is there should be a consideration. Now what is consideration is defined in very different manner. It is said all that is received for supply of goods. Okay, which means that the anything you receive for supply of goods becomes a consideration, and it ends with the term in monetary terms, in money value or any like goods. So there are two school of thoughts in this. One are, one would say that since it ends with the words in money money consideration, it includes only one money value, and barter is out of this consideration. But when you refer to valuation rules, it refers to saying that. It gives you the consideration, the determination of value for transaction in money and transaction in other ways also. So when it refers to transaction in other ways, it means non-monetary consideration is also a part of consideration. So I would say that barter transactions are also valid transactions, and any exchange of goods is a consideration. Because had it not been there, the valuation mechanisms wouldn't have told about this. When you refer Article 27, it will clearly tell you. Saying that what it has to be done in terms of a valuation for a transaction which is in money consideration, and what has to be done in terms of non-monetary consideration also. If the consideration is only money, then the value of that supply is the amount of money received. And and if it is in non-monetary consideration, then you have to assign the value, the market value of the goods which is coming in. Suppose I sell a laptop, and I get something in exchange, say a printer. Then the value of the printer, the market value of the printer, what I'm getting in exchange of this laptop, will be the consideration. Other important aspect to be seen in this UAE VAT is considerations are considered as all inclusive of taxes. Unlike India, where we say consider uh, taxes are additional because you have this base value of your product when you sell it, and taxes are additionally added. Here you have a concept of taxes are inclusive. They are Published price is always considered as inclusive of taxes, except in two scenarios: when you are doing an export of goods or services, or when you are supplying it to a registered person. So they are very loosely worded it. Then they have said, in case of a supply to B to B or a registered trans, a registered um, receiver, he will be then in that case your prices will be price plus taxes. And if you are supplying it to a non-registered, that is to a B to C transaction. It will be considered as inclusive of taxes. And two or more persons are required for a transaction because the definition says a taxable supply is supply of goods or services for a consideration by a person. So it has to be by a person to another person. And person is defined as natural and legal person. Okay. So uh, what does this mean? Is there has to be two people for a transaction. You cannot do a transaction with yourself. You will have multiple businesses within the UAE, and you may have branches within the same Emirates or within the same UAE. You will have different Emirates. If you have branch in Abu Dhabi, you have branch in Dubai. Any transaction made or supply made by Dubai to Abu Dhabi is exempted because it is not made by. Two different persons. It is made by one person to his own branch. Okay. So within Emirates, yeah, it will be not taxable. But outside Emirates, as he has uh, Sandesh has explained, it will be taxable. Okay. There is one more concept called as sovereign. So wherein uh, transaction by the sovereign is also liable to VAT. Sovereign means the any transactions or any uh, supply of goods or services made by the government. They have clearly distinguished what is taxable, what is not. Any transactions or any sale made by the government, which is in the nature of sovereign authority, and it is done in the welfare of the public, then it is not taxable. But if it does, if the same transaction is made in non-sovereign capacity, then it will be taxable. 
and also it further says any transaction made by the sovereign which is in competition with private sector. So we see that lot of government authorities there do lot of transaction which private authorities also do. So in, in case there is a private uh, competition, then it will be taxable uh, in nature. Yes. I have a question, sir. You, you specifically said uh, you know uh, two or more person should be there. See okay, now the basic question what I have is you know artificial intelligence is everywhere now. So what if an artificial intelligence, say a robot kind of situation is there and it's trying to sell goods to some you know natural person? So, does it mean it's outside that or outside? No, perfect. They will have to decide where is the business being carried out. No, but you specifically said two or more persons. So, Correct. does does robo fall under a person or how? No, do person you? means here natural and legal person. So, if a robo is doing, it is doing on the instruction of somebody. Either you own it or somebody owns it. Correct. It cannot do the business on its own. Okay. It will not have a separate identity as such. You will have some owner for it, right? Okay, still you have to trace the owner then. Correct, you will have to trace the owner. Actually, the earlier speaker spoke that a group company can have a one tax identity number. That's a tax group registration. Tax group registration. In that case, the group is considered as one person or multiple person? Group is then considered as one person. One person. Yeah. So, the selling between? Between the group will not be any tax. It's not a tax. No tax. No company existence. Correct. We will detail that tomorrow when we have this registration. I specifically mention what is the tax group, how is the transaction between the tax group and the tax group. So, when you talk about the modern system, is yeah. uh, a case like a novated lease kind of arrangement? In case of a? Uh, say a novated lease kind of arrangement. Okay. The company is uh, giving a laptop to say an uh, employer. Hmm. And for his salaries, they are deducting say some uh, $10 or whatever you are deducting it. No, you are deducting the employee salary regularly because you have decided how much should be the consideration. So upfront you know the consideration, you are just delaying the money receipt. Receiving of money at a later point of time does not mean that your sale transaction is delayed. Your sale transaction has happened at the time when you have given the laptop to your employee itself. It's only that the consideration is getting delayed in installments. So at that time, you will supply that the product to the employee who will be liable for that. Okay. Irrespective of uh, the... Yeah, the money consideration later. So, the, uh, we will read, uh, we'll see this in detail when you see this place of provision of supply, where either you raise an invoice or you transfer a property or receive money. Whichever is earlier will trigger the taxation. So, I guess this two or more person, what is the relevance of concept of mutual aid? Uh, particularly for residents, owners, associations. Okay. So, there is a owners, associations, there are residents. Is there a business? 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 So if you need a stock transfer to a branch, it won't be taxed. A branch within Emirates. Within Emirates, yeah. yeah. Will not be taxed. So, what if, uh, so in the previous session we had a discussion about designated zone. Correct. So from designated zone to UAE will be subject to customs. So what Correct. if I have a branch in in, in Maine? Designated zone are treated as uh, countries are, are at least considered as registered entities outside the UAE. So you, if even if you have a branch in the mainland and one branch in the designated zone, those will be treated separately. We are talking is within the mainland and within the entities. Then it will be exempt. Because designated zone enjoys special privilege because they are getting customs exemptions as well. So you cannot tell that tran transaction between designated zone and non-designated zone will be treated in par with this. That is it. But if you have branches outside UAE, okay, suppose uh, a typical example of having a branch in Dubai and one in Saudi Arabia. Those are not covered here because this law applies only to UAE and it is exempted within the UAE. So outside UAE will be taxable separately, either under reverse charge or things that depend on the place of supply. <coughs> and transaction between a partner and LLP will also not be taxable because those transactions are in the nature of his partner. Like if he gets any salary, interest on capital, it's the same person who is taking the consideration from the firm. 
So those are exempted. But if a partner does anything in his business capacity, supplying goods to the LLP, those are taxable. Then it says in the course of business. Uh, it, this is very relevant because anything done in the course of business is only taxable. Anything done out of the scope of business is not taxable. What is business? Any activity conducted regularly and on an ongoing basis. So any transaction which is where there is a continuity. Only that is considered as a business. Unlike in India where we have one-off transaction taking place, that is also considered as a business. But here it is clearly mentioned that the activity should be on a regular basis and it should be done independently by any person. It should not be that an employee does any service to his employer will be considered as a business because he is not doing it independently. He is doing based on the instruction of his employer. And it can be done anywhere for any of these activities, could be industrial, commercial, but there has to be a motive behind it and there has to be a uh, continuity and the business has to start. Suppose you set up a factory and do not start the business, then it will not be considered as a business at all because you have just not done the production at all. Okay? And it says it should be in the state of UAE. The relevance here is in reference to person conducting business should be in UAE. It doesn't matter whether you supply outside UAE or you receive consideration as well outside UAE. The business which is being conducted should be in UAE. Uh, if you draw this, uh, if you take this example of Amazon who is supplying goods from say a US to UAE, okay, even though the goods are reaching UAE, it will not be considered as Amazon is doing business in UAE. It's only that the place of supply is in UAE and the person who is clearing those goods will get taxed because he is the person who is responsible under reverse charge. But Amazon is not doing business in UAE because they have not set up in UAE. Okay? So in that case, just because of supply will not make them UAE because the business is not in UAE. And the place of supply rules will determine. In our example, the place of supply is in UAE because goods are moving outside, outside the UAE to UAE. So it becomes an import transaction and the person who is clearing the goods will have to pay taxes under reverse charge. And if he is a registered dealer, he can pay it by filing his uh, monthly VAT return or quarterly VAT returns. But in case of an unregistered purchaser, unregistered importer, he will have to pay the duties at the time of customs clearance itself. So that's a distinction here. Before moving on to the next slide on excludes what is exempt supply and not, we will deal what is exempt supply and what is zero rated supply. Exempt supply would mean margin based financial services. I think Sandesh mentioned there one thing which he uh, missed out is financial services are specified and financial services includes also life insurance. So any life insurance and reinsurance is also considered as a financial services and it is exempted. So they are restricted only to financial services. It means any health services or commercial insurance or any health insurance is not an exempt service. So it will be taxable service. Okay. And zero rated services, other thing is export of goods and services are zero rated. Then international transport of goods are also zero rated. First sale of newly constructed residential property within three years of its construction. So if a property is being constructed, within three years if, you, if the seller, if the buyer sells it, if the contractor sells it, then it is zero rated. After that it is exempted. So what does this mean is, up to three years, whatever is a credit lying with him, he can claim refund of that. After three years, he will be exempted but credit will not be available. That is the distinction between zero rated and exempt supply. Okay, just note this words because I will change it again because there is a provision which allows this that credit can be claimed. But on a basic understanding of zero rated and exempt supply, first three years of the sale it is zero rated, so uh, tax credit is available as refund. Post three years it is exempted, so basically it is not a creditable uh, input. Government funded education is zero rated supply. Preventive and basic healthcare, they have come up with a cabinet decision saying that healthcare is exempt and medicines and medical equipments also as listed, that is also zero rated supply. And supply of crude oil and natural gas is zero rated. In terms of jewellery, jewellery is taxable, but they have said pure gold which is in a bullion tradable form, that is zero rated. Okay. So what we have seen there is, 
uh, people try to bring a lot of gold from Dubai because of the rate variances and because of the currency variances. What people do there is, they say, okay, we'll give you pure gold, but you cannot carry it directly. So what do you do? They will convert it in a small jewelry form and give you. So what they do is, when they do that conversion, on the conversion itself, they're saying, okay, on the conversion, I'll do something called as a making charge. On making charges, they're charging back. But from a legal perspective, you see, you're buying a made of jewelry. So in my view, it should be taxable completely and not saying that it is only on the making charge, I will charge tax. But the legal practice, or the ground reality is, what the goldsmiths are doing is, they are giving you pure gold. Now they are converting and giving it to you. On the conversion, they are saying, okay, this is only a conversion uh, charge. So I will charge VAT only on the conversion charge and on the pure gold, I will not charge. This could be subject to litigation there. Because the government feels that, yeah, if it is, we have to go with substance over form. What is it you are buying? You are buying a jewelry. So on that, tax will be applicable. And uh, in terms of exempt supplies, <coughs> Your margin based financial services and insured life insurance is exempted. Apart from that, residential properties after three years, then you have bare land which is exempted and local passenger transport services. All the metros and trams which run there and even the local buses are run by government. So those are all exempt. So types of supplies would see is taxable supplies and non-taxable supplies. Taxable supplies are again considered as standard rated supply of 5% and zero rated supply and non-taxable supplies would be those which are exempted and which are outside the scope. So we have seen that a lot of services and supplies are outside the scope as well. The distinction is input tax credit is available in terms of standard rated supply and zero rated supply. In terms of exempt supply, input tax credit is not available. Now when we are going through all these clauses, last clause I have left specifically because we need to understand the distinction between zero rate and exempt supply. Now in terms of article 54 which says that <coughs> Article 54 says apart from uh, taxable supply and zero rated supply we will give you a certain list which will also be treated as exempt but credit is available in that they have mentioned this financial services so financial services, even though it is exempt, you can claim input tax credit refund provided the place of supply is outside UAE. So any financial services provided outside UAE, input credit will be available, even though it is exempt. Second is tax paid in another implementing state, if I am importing some goods and clearing it in Saudi, I will have to pay back there. Once I clear it here, I can claim credit over here because tax, even though tax is paid in another state. So this is a specific provision which says even though taxes is paid in another state I can claim it in this state itself and the third provision what I was referring to is residential property it says first sale of residential building and change of use of it so I have a residential property first three years I have sold it then it will be zero rated all my input tax credit is available okay but what if I do not sell it later on I change the use from residential to commercial even in this case there is a relieving provision where it says still you can claim the credit. So this is an initial provision that said residential building even though it is converted later on you can claim the credit for that. <coughs> now we move to deemed supply. Deemed supply are specified in three different articles. One is article 7 which says which is what are the cases of special supply. They have said uh, voucher specifically. What is voucher? Voucher could be of three varieties wherein I exchange voucher for money, I exchange voucher for goods or I exchange voucher for anything else. So in that case, if the value of the voucher is exchanged for money, then it is nothing but consideration. There is no supply element in that because today instead of paying uh, 1000 dirhams to the shopkeeper after a month, I am paying him in advance. That is the relevance of the first kind of voucher. Second kind of voucher is I buy voucher for exchange of specified goods. In that case they have said it will be taxable only if the paid value is more than is uh, greater than its carried value. They have something called as advertised value of a voucher. So if a product is available only against a voucher and the voucher is advertised as 1000 dirhams. 
when you go and buy it because of the de demand of the voucher, it is sold more than 1000 dirhams, say 1100 dirhams. So the taxable value will be only on 100 dirhams. And 1000 will be taxable when you exchange the voucher against the goods. So they have clearly specified that whatever is the advertised value, if you are charging anything in excess of the advertised value, only then it is taxable. If it is at the same advertised value or, at the, or if it is at the same face price, then there is no tax on the voucher per se. Second uh, case of special services, in case of a transfer of whole or part of the business, then it will not be supplied when the buyer is a taxable person and it is intended to continue the same business. So this becomes a case of a slum sale, where you are not selling the specific goods or specific assets individually, but you are selling the complete business and the other person has an intention to continue the business. Then it becomes an exempted supply. And it doesn't become exempt supply, it becomes out of scope supply because there will not be any input rate reversal or anything to be done. It will be completely out of scope supply. Then you have cases of deemed supply. Whatever supplies which were missing in the previous ingredients will be looped in here and they will be treated as deemed supply. First is change of business use, change of the asset use. So I bought a business, uh, bought a, a particular asset to use it for my business, but later on I changed it. Say I have given it as a gift, I have converted it into donation or something. Then the nature of the asset, what I bought it, is getting converted. In that scenario, you will have to reverse your credit or pay the tax. So it becomes a deemed supply. Instead of telling reverse your input credit, they are treating this as deemed supply and tax is payable on that. Second scenario is transfer of business assets. So they said transfer of business assets within from UAE to any other state, it will become taxable. So that's the reason I was saying outside Emirate, if you do any stock transfer, it will become taxable. And any non-business use, you have any asset which you have bought it and now you are converting it to your personal use or anything for non-business use, that will be also become taxable. So instead of reversing credit, they say pay the taxes on your supply per se. Then stocks on deregistration. On the closure of your business, if you have any stocks, irrespective of whether you are selling it well enough, when you sell it, you will pay tax. If you do not sell it, whatever is the stock dying as on the day will be considered as a taxable supply to yourself and you will have to pay tax on that. Uh, out of the four, four scenarios, the fourth scenario is very peculiar because it doesn't say whether you have claimed input credit or not. Because it's very much possible that prior to a VAT coming in, you would have bought some assets and now you are closing it post VAT scenario. In that case also, whatever is the stock lying on hand as on the date of deregistration has to be taxed. Then they have us, first of all we have a deemed supply only because you are deeming something which is not taxable. Now they are given exclusion to deemed supply. So should we, understood, uh, should we understand that this is an exemption to deemed supply or an, is it an exemption to supply itself? Because deemed supply, the nature is you have to deem something which is not supply and they are saying some things are not deemed supply also. So we have to uh, understand that this is an exception to the deemed supply. First is when no input tax was recovered. So we saw a scenario in this case wherein transfer of business, uh, no non-business use. So if you buy any assets and you say give it, use it for non-business use, then you have to pay tax. Then they give an exemption here saying that if input tax was not recovered. So if any input tax was not recovered and you bought that asset, now you are using that business for non-business use, then you do not have to reverse the credit or you do not have to pay the tax. Okay. So this we we'll have to understand certainly in terms of any asset which is being used for business purposes is creditable and when you later use it for non-business purposes, you will have to pay tax on that portion. But if this asset which you have bought on which you have not claimed the credit then you do not have to pay tax because there is no loss of revenue to the government. This is the uh, understanding with uh, Article 11 and Article 12. Then you have any exempt supply. Exempt supply will not be taxable even though it comes under deemed category. So it's uh, saying any deemed supply will also be exempted if, if the supply itself is an exempt supply. Okay. Then capital asset scheme. So if you have bought any capital assets, you can claim the full credit of it upfront, and you will have to 
make adjustment to the credit if you are using it for exempt purposes. Okay, so they have this capital asset scheme where you buy an asset, claim the full credit and year on year you have to monitor how much of it is used for exempt and non-exempt purposes. So if you bought an asset for the first year and second year you have used it for non-exempt you use it for exempt purposes, proportionate credit will get reversed. And second year, again you use it for exempt purposes, that much credit will again get reversed. Now at the end of second year, you sell it. So you will have to pay back on the same value minus whatever credit you have reversed. So they said to the extent of capital asset scheme reversal, that much will not be considered as a deemed supply. Okay, if you have bought capital asset and you have sold outright, no credit adjustment has been made, then on the full value tax is payable. Clear? So whatever credit you have already reversed, they will not ask you to pay taxes again to avoid double taxation. Then you have threshold exemption which is samples and gifts. So any samples and gifts you give up to 500 dirhams to per person. So uh, practically what they are saying is you cannot give samples of more than 500 dirhams to one person. So what does it mean? You will have to have details of people to whom you are giving. You will have to have names of those people or some identity saying that to each person have not sold samples or uh, gifts more than 500 dirhams. With the way accounting is happening there, it becomes very difficult because when we go and ask there uh, saying that how do you make a transaction, there are various transactions for which accounting is not made in Dubai itself. They say we have been following this procedure, we, we don't know how do we change it. With uh, accounting procedure itself getting changed, complexities like this will add up to them. But to ensure that the tax is not payable, they will have to make it. And second scenario is all deemed supply. Whatever deemed supply we have said, if those deemed supply in totality do not exceed 2000 dirhams, then they do not have to pay tax. If the value exceeds 2000 dirhams, only then tax is payable. When we saw the levy, we saw the first limb of tax shall be payable on taxable supply and deemed supply. The second limb is tax on import of concerned goods. So unlike, same like India, how we have imports on which we pay customs duty and we pay GST. <coughs> Similarly, here it says import of concerned goods is liable to tax. Here there is no distinction between business use and non-business use. So if you import any goods, you will have either for business or non-business, you will have to pay customs duty plus VAT. The only difference is if it is for a business purpose, you can delay your VAT, uh, VAT payment on filing of the VAT return and in case of non-business people, you will have to pay VAT immediately on clearing the goods. Now they have defined what is import and what is concerned goods, again in article 1. Import means arrival of goods from abroad into India. So the goods have to physically move from abroad into, it, uh, into the UAE, only then it will be considered as an import. Just a book entry will not be considered as an import. So all merchant trading, whatever they do, wherein they just uh, through a pass-through entry, it will not be treated as import. Because import definition is clear that arrival of goods, the goods have to move the customs frontier of UAE and enter into the mainland of UAE, or at least onto the uh, customs clearance has to happen. That will be treated as import. And what is concerned goods is, goods that have been imported and would not be exempt if supplied in the state. So if there is any goods like medical items which are exempted, if, if some import happens of medical uh, equipment, then it will not be taxable because the tax on medical equipment within the mainland is also exempt. So if there is any taxable goods which is getting imported, import duty and VAT will apply only on that, otherwise it will not apply. One uh, distinction to be seen here is, it says import of concerned goods itself, it doesn't tell import of concerned services. So will, will we imply that <coughs> import of uh, services is exempt? At least from this slim, if you read, it says yes. It, uh, the answer would be yes, that import of concerned goods only are taxable, but services are exempted. But what they what have said is, they have uh, specifically mentioned provisions of reverse charge mechanism, where they have said, if you import any services, it will be deemed as though you are supplying services to yourself and you are a taxable supplier to that extent. So it doesn't get covered under this length, it gets covered under the taxable supply itself. So import of services are also taxable but on a different footing. 
imports are also exempted because they have said based on the customs procedures there will be some import exemptions which will be available. So in case of any temporary admission of goods, all these four criteria will be exempted provided you give a financial guarantee to the customs. Okay, there will be like a bond, a bank guarantee, something mostly like a bond because uh, they have uh, specifically mentioned some banks to whom you will have to go obtain a financial guarantee and give it to them. So you will have to give a financial guarantee only that these criteria are exempted. In case of a temporary admission of goods, in case the goods are placed in the customs warehouse. So you, you can you have some customs warehouse wherein you clear the goods and move the goods to the customs warehouse. Up till that point <coughs> there is no tax payable. Beyond the customs warehouse, once you clear it, then tax is payable. Then you have goods in transit, wherein the goods are coming in and going out for some reason. Those are all exempt from that. And imported goods which is intended to be re-exported by the same person. So you will have some time limit wherein you can import it and then sell it back. Those are exempt. You have second category of exemption wherein here there is no need for financial guarantee or anything being given. It is outright exempted on import. First is military and internal security forces. If they import something, they do not have to pay back. Personal effects and gifts accompanied by travellers. Of course, this is subject to customs law. If the customs says that you will have to pay VAT on import, you will have to pay customs duty, but VAT will be exempt. And use personal effects and household items. So if any UAE resident moves out and comes back, he gets any personal goods for his living. Those are exempted. Or an expat from any other country goes and stays in UAE with his personal belongings. Those have to be declared and will be exempted. And return goods, if you are selling any goods and getting it back, same returns uh, will be covered here, all those will be bad exempt. What is temporary admission? Can you give an example? Uh, it could be case wherein you import something only for the purpose of overall or for the purpose of state. It could be in terms of big uh, machineries or big all these uh, ships which come inside and they are only there for temporary purpose and we will have to en route again to a different country. So it's only temporary up entering the limits of UAE, but it's going out. Okay, which means uh, sale or supply is not happening in UAE. Sale or supply, no. Okay. So it should it not cross. Uh, temporary admission, it can be mainland, but it will not come because if a ship is coming in, it will not come into the mainland, it will just go off. These exceptions are only mainland. This is exempt from mainland. Designated zone? Designated zone, everything is exempt. Then uh, we have this criteria how we have in India of composite supply and mixed supply. There we have single composite supply and something called as multiple supply. And there is nothing called as mixed supply there. They have renamed it as multiple supply. When will this occur is, when a supply is made of more than one component for one price. If you are charging one price and providing multiple components, then it will come as a supply of more than comp more than one component. And another important condition is all these components should be supplied by the same supplier. Okay, and same like India, one supplier has to supply various components of one product. Then you will distinguish whether it is single composite supply or multiple supply. Okay, so if multiple products are first issued to you, you will decide whether it is all coming as a multiple components and is it coming by the same person. Once you decide that, then the next question would be whether it is a single composite supply. To establish single composite supply, there has to be these criteria. There has to be one principal component. There cannot be multiple principal components, there has to be one principal component and there has to be other components which is which are means of better enjoying the principal supply. Okay, we will explain, uh, we will come to this with an example but let us understand the principle. There has to be one principal component and there has to be other sub components to it. And it, it should be unnatural to split the transaction. Okay, uh, in case of a, uh, installation, if you are buying the air conditioning and doing an installation, even though it can be done separately, the air conditioner supplier gives a consolidated price for this. So it is uh, difficult to split what is the price for the air conditioner and what is the price for the fit out. So that is why it will be considered as a single composite supply. And second is multiple supplies. 
whatever is not single composite supply will be multiple supply. So if you have two principal components involved, it will not fit into a single composite supply. Then it will be a multiple supply. The taxation would be, if it is a single composite supply, what is the tax applicable on the principal component will apply on all components. Luckily, they do not have different categorization or different VAT rates, so this will not be a problem, but they have just kept it as a measure of safety, seeing that if you have a single composite supply, what is the price for the principal component that will apply. And in case of multiple supplies, unlike in India where we have the tax rate will be the maximum rate, they have said no uh, maximum rate, all applicable rates which is applicable to individual components, that will be the VAT rate. So, Today it is 5%, going forward if they want to increase it to 5, 7 and 8, then you will apply 5, 7 and 8 for these 3 products and not the highest rate. Okay. In India we will have, if uh, same product is supplied at different rates, 5, 7 and 8, you will have to apply 8 across all the products. But here they have said, you will have to apply multiple rates for this multiple products. The example would be uh, fitting of a camera. So wherein Camera is bought along with it, the fitting charges is included. So this will become a case of single composite supply. And multiple supply within, uh, by multiple products, you have just bundled it together for the sake, but there is no principle in this. Everything is equally important. That, that will become a case of multiple supply. Apart from this, we have certain uh, cases of supply by agent. Now, uh, if a supply is made by an agent, how do you tax it? They have, uh, it's not same like how it is in India, it is very different there. So if an agent makes any supply on behalf of the principal and he is mentioning the principal's name, then it will be treated as a supply by the principal itself. Unlike here where it will all be treated separately, if you are making any supply and the principal you may, uh, under the guidance or under the name of a principal, then it will be treated as supply by the principal. If you are making an independent supply not involving the principal, then it will be treated as a supply by the agent. Okay, that is the distinction between supply by a principal and supply by agent. Okay, other concept is they, they have all said right to recover VAT. They have said who will have to pay tax in case of a transaction taking place when you supply any goods. They have just said who has to pay. They, they said the taxable person is a person who will have to pay. But there is no provision to recover the VAT. So what does this mean is, if I make any supply, I am the person who is liable to pay VAT. But am I eligible to collect the VAT from my buyer? The law does not say. So unlike every other indirect taxes, wherein it is a tax on the person, on the taxable person, on the artificially uh, jurisdictional person who is specified in the law. The law has said taxable person will be the person who will pay tax. Now he does not have the right to cover, collect the tax legally based on the VAT law. How do we collect taxes is because based on a contractual relationship. When I enter into a contract and tell this is my contract plus taxes. So because of that obligation of the contract I can collect taxes from him. Otherwise, the VAT law does not give you power saying that if the other person is not paying you, you should not pay tax. Irrespective of your buyer paying taxes to you or not, you will have to pay taxes to the government. That is the same scenario in India or in UAE. And on the tax rate also, the tax rate is fixed as of now and any change in the tax rate cannot be made only by the UAE because the VAT rate is mentioned in the GCC itself. The GCC VAT framework says VAT rate will be at 5%. So any changes in the VAT rate of one country will not be in a position to change individually. They will have to go to GCC. All the countries as a consolidated, uh, consolidated rate they will have to change it and not individually. Any questions? I have a question. Uh, I have worked in uh, Gulf countries. Uh, it's very common that you know uh, a car is uh, displayed in airports. You know somebody you know uh, some lucky draw happened and you know car is uh, given uh, given to the uh, you know the person who, who wins the uh, draw or something like that. So given that situation, uh, uh, you know would would there be a VAT element for that? There is no consideration in this case, so would not be according to me because uh, you have to prove it 
from a seller's perspective, if you are a car manufacturer, you are giving it as a free. So are you including the cost of this free car in your costing of other cars? Okay. Like, an, uh, like you have many uh, <coughs> doctor samples being given. Right. So this is a similar case. Where in my costing, I can establish that even though this is given free of cost to one particular person, it is considered in my pricing of other goods. So I have already paid bad for this. Similar case of warranty. So if a car is being sold and you have after sale services, okay, you do not collect anything for the re uh, replenishment of the spare parts. But still you will tell the spare parts value is all considered in my original car value itself. So I will not pay tax again on it, but uh, you have to prove how you do this. Sorry? Gift also, yeah, you have to see how you treat that. But the limit is only 500 years. 500 years. No, this is a different thing. Yeah. Okay. Will this be considered as a gift? Because this will not be considered this will be a part of a promotion thing. Right. Gift is something which is given not of the same product but of a different product. So if I am a car manufacturer, if I give gift of say any box or something, that will be considered as a gift. And not the car itself is a gift. This is a promotional activity, it will not be treated as a gift. Slightly tricky but still we have to see if yeah, Deepak, you mentioned the uh, rate, uh, any increase in the rate of reduction, GCC has to be concentrated. Correct. So, uh, is it correct uh, any rules, regulations or amendment, uh, any new provisions, again GCC, uh, GCC no, has to be concentrated? for rate. Rates. Because rate is specifically mentioned in the GCC, that's why rate changes will have to be gone through the GCC. Okay. Other amendments, UAE itself has their own weekly data, so they will do it. And uh, you have one of the slides you have shown, uh, uh, government educational services are exempt. Okay. What about uh, government other services or services to government? How it is that? Services, first is services by the government. Yeah. If they are doing in the nature of sovereign, yeah. then it is exempt. If it is in non sovereign or it is in competition with private players, then it is taxable. Supply from private players to government. There is no separate uh, you know, exemption given there. So any supply made to the government is also taxable. What about the actionable claims in UAE as to the value event? Actionable claims? Yes. Uh, some examples. Like the insurance claim or something like that. Huh. So it will not be treated as a taxable supply itself because there is no supply of goods. Correct? But service? Same thing. It's indemnification, right? There's no supply of goods as well. There is regulation for trading in digital currencies. They have not uh, specified anything. So it will be considered as any other monetary consideration. They have only one e gram there. So for all tax payments in them, we will have to use e gram. Others are slowly picking up. But they have to be regulated. They have to be regulated. Because there the laws are very strict in terms of licensing. So any transaction you do, you will have to take a trade license. International transportation of goods and services are zero rated under Article 49. Is this applicable only to Shetland or Airline or it is applicable to the agents also? It is applicable to the agents also. For example, Emirates is selling a ticket of 1000 dollars. It is zero rated from the same ticket is sent by the travel agent for 1000 to 100. 200 ideal has to be taxed. How does he see that? 1000 uh, will be that ticket charge, 200 rupees agency charge. What is the invoice? 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 Ha, but you have to also look at some point of view of accounting. How does he treat the 1200 as? Yes. He treat the 1200 completely as a sale? No, he is treated as a sale. Then it will be examined because it's a complete charge. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but generally what it's seen is they do not want to pay taxes on the whole thing. So they will show only 200 as their agency charges and 1000 will get set off at 1200 as a reimbursement. So under only 200 charges will be the tax paid. If we go with the idle situation. So, how this reimbursement uh, has to be adjusted? Whether they can claim the VAT uh, exemption or whether VAT has to be paid? For 1000, yes. example, for yes. 1000 rupees, it is exempted because either I buy or I sell it to somebody, there is tax exemption in that case because the nature of the transaction is uh, international <coughs> travel. So, there will not be any tax on this. And I have to only charge 200 and tax on this 200 dirhams, not on 1000.
Sir, what about the reimbursement of expenses, sir? Because uh, there is no concept of uh, beer in the entire law. Okay. So, so how to deal with They are not uh, clarified that, but in terms of uh, valuation, if you see, valuation would be the value for the goods or services. So, any reimbursements, you will have to, uh, they are not part of this and neither they are mentioned in the executive regulations. So, going with the idle situation, reimbursements is not part of the supply, so it will be exempted. So, not be, you will not have to tax on reimbursements. Uh, any, anything on the OIDAR services for UAE? No, they are not mentioned this. So, till the time is not mentioned, no news is good news, so that is what and, uh, and uh, will there be any uh, code for identifying goods or services? Like uh, how do we have with GST, SSN and SSN? Codes, is it? Codes. No, they are not allowed. Because the uh, service, if you say, uh, we treat uh, professional and other services as just a service and uh, taxes just to be required. February, the first monthly bank return is what comes together. They just mentioned supply, that's all. They are not given separate codes and anything. And we don't foresee any such codes coming in because the rate is remaining the same. That was the main main doubt also I had, you know, when you have the rate fixed, why, why you should have goods and uh, services separate, you know? Can that, just that shows their intention that going forward, I think they want to distinguish. Maybe they'll have a different rate than going yeah, forward. Yeah, could be. I think there was no need for distinguishing. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Why why do you even have a definition for goods services when you have a fixed rate and the end of the rate, it's only one, one, yeah. one number you have to All tax laws, you know, Think for the future. So, they so, so, so I, I saw some differences uh, when, when Sandesh was presenting. The way uh, a ta taxability from a designated zone to a mainland zone that is the for way. goods is a taxability uh, of service, service from mainland. Mainland. DZ to right. mainland. That's but so they are, they are restricted right. only for DZ, but they have kept it as a general for everybody. So that implies that they want to change it. What about the right accessibility of private colleges like the CA coaching center? Training centers. Yeah. Like CA coaching. Yeah, yeah. they said money education which is funded by the government. So specific criteria are mentioned. Okay. So all private right. sectors, everything is taxed. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put uh, hands to a wonderful session handled by CA Deepak P. Thank you, sir. I request Suram Bhatt to come forward and present the memento. On behalf of the members present here, I am Bangalore Bank. Now you can take a break for lunch. You can reassemble for the fourth technical session at 2.50.